Daniel Jason next on the list. Uh, is there any world where Sims makes Mitch expendable based on the smallest of sample sizes? It seems like he provides a lot of the same vertical spacing and activity that Mitch Robinson does. I can't believe who I'm about to reference. Oh, boy. But. It was because <laughs> it, it made me it made me like stop what I was doing. Like, what? Um, Zach Lowe had uh, Stephen A. Smith on his podcast. Now, oh, I was to say, are you, are you shocked that you referenced Zach Lowe? Jeff? No, I'm shocked that I'm referencing <laughs> Stephen A. Smith because yeah, he, brought, he, he brought up the Knicks and he brought up like, you know, the Dame thing. And uh, like he asked Stephen A. Smith, who like, would you would your line be at like, would you draw the line in the sand at R.J. Barrett? And he's like, no, I wouldn't. I would draw the line in the sand at Julius Reno. And he's like, and I would draw the line in the sand at Mitchell Robinson. And it just, I thought, Oy. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I wonder how many people think this way. And I just, it, it just made me, cause like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, to answer the question. No, I don't think the Knicks are looking. Here's my, my own personal theory that I've gotten. I don't know where I got this from. I didn't get it from anywhere. Is that the, the Knicks are outwardly trying to project Mitchell Robinson as a um like he's a part of our core, like he's we're, we're not moving him. He's like he is as vital as as life itself. Whereas I I I think he's the guy that they he's the guy that they want to headline a trade package, would be what I would say. Oh, okay. Jeremy. Uh, I feel like Mitchell Robinson could be a Nick for 15 years and retire. And I'm still going to be like, but he still could get traded. Like, I still don't trust the Knicks to, <laughs> to hang on to him. Um, I think you're going in a different I, direction. I was like, or he could not be a Nick 15 minutes from now. And I wouldn't or, or that too. Um, I don't, I don't think Sims makes Robinson expendable. I think Robinson makes Robinson expendable. Um, oh, that's I, I, it is, but I think it's the sort of thing where, and this is just a guess and the Knicks could do something, not this whatsoever, but I think that the Knicks are going to try to get Mitch to extend this off season before the deadline and give him the max, which is like four years and $51 million. And then Robinson could say no. And if he does, then I think the Knicks say, okay, well, uh, we don't want you to walk for nothing. So we're going to look to trade you at some point, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it's because of Sims that it'll be the case. Um, Sims, Sims's verticality is incredible. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to say it on the actual podcast. It could have worked, but at one point when watching Sims go vertical, I was saying like Sims going vertical makes me go horizontal. Oh God. Because <laughs> that's why I didn't say it. Um, but it's the sort of thing where I just like, he's so explosive <laughs> But he is. I, it's a sort of thing where, like, are we projecting him to be a starting uh, center now? Because Whoa. the best thing with Mitch is that, you know, it's the, it's also the defense. It's not just his ability to finish around the rim. It's it's defending the paint. It's defending around the perimeter. It's switching. It's pick and roll. Um, it's so much else that it's like it's hard to replace that. Uh, and, you know, because, again, like we saw, Noel was good, but not good enough. But Mitch also has Can not been healthy enough to, to show that. I just want to jump in. Yes. The conversation. And this is why this is tough. Look, Sims is a very nice player. Do I think if him having continuing to have a great summer league will, will matter, you know, 10 or 15 or 25% of their decision about like what, maybe if there's an opportunity with Mitch to include him in a trade, like might that factor in? Yeah. It might factor in a little bit, but this Jeremy nailed it. This really is more about Mitch and more about the position that Mitch plays. If you're a, a shot creating wing or you're a point guard who could like extend with, with range and actually run a team, like there are no conversations. If you could do the things, you're in demand. People will give up all of everything to get you. They'll pay you any amount of money to get you. The, it's the simplest conversation in sports. If you are one of those guys, it's just about like, okay, we want it. How could we get it with centers? It's like, okay, we have to talk about, well, 
you know, there's a drop off from like Rudy Gobert to Clint Capella. Like, what is that drop off? How much is it worth? Is it worth twenty million dollars a year? Like, what you know? At what point is there an overpay? And then you get health factored into it, and then you get like, okay, how re- you know, Mitch is a special talent on the pick and roll and rim protecting, but like, how replaceable is that? Like, it's all these nuanced conversations that exist because of the way this position is now utilized in in the game, and like. People are going to push back on that and be like, oh, you don't understand how the importance of, you know, elite pick and roll. I'm like, look, I get it. I get it. He's really good at what he's really good at. It doesn't matter on the same level as what other guys at, that play other positions do. So, yeah, I do think also his market is really, um, for lack of a better word, fucked because <laughs> think about it. Right. Like, again, harsh. Neuro- but but, hey, but really, I mean, exactly. Uh, New Orleans, You're not Carole, wrong. we found not out wrong. signed for what? Eight million dollars and granted he's got more wear and tear he's you're betting on potential with mitch um but rashawn holmes just signed for the equivalent of the average salary which starts at like 10 million dollars a little bit more than that and rashawn holmes is is older as well but he's also shown more so it's like at a certain point you have to balance what you think that player can have and what that player has has shown which is why i think offering Mitch four years and $51 million. That's a very fair deal, especially when you look at what it's, how it's working out. It's you just should take that and run that. if they I offer agree. that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I just want to say there's a chance he's the third best center on the, on the market next year after Valanciunas and Nurkic. They're, and the they're, one thing. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm saying there, there are teams that might want those guys more than, than Mitch, you know, we don't know. Right. And the one thing as well in terms of um, with trading Mitch is that his salary, it's like the, the poison pill. Um, and it's basically in the sense of like, it's not like the tail and Horton Tucker contract poison pill, Jeremy Lin, poison, you know, all of that. It's more like it was like what Kuzma had to deal with, with the Lakers when they were trying to figure out if they wanted to trade him or not. It's uh, because he's, he's already signed to an extension. If he, if in this case, Mitch does that, his outgoing salary is very large, but his incoming salary, it's it's different. Or like, basically, the, the way it works is that the math makes, throws yeah. everything off. They basically makes it try tough to, to make, make a trade. So you, so you don't trade that player that you just signed to extension. So that could be something the Knicks are also considering as to why they wouldn't want to do it. Um, but again, I, I mean, if I'm New York, I still offer the 451. And um, if that's not it, then I mean, that kind of tells me a lot for what might happen moving forward. So I want to read two questions that were both just answered in the response you guys gave, but it, I want to acknowledge these people that asked, asked questions. Uh, Zach Elmer, uh, he asked, how do you think the Mitch Robinson situation plays out? He's great and would love to have him be here since he was the best Nick's best player prior to RJ, but with Noel being signed and Sims possibly being a big get, it's hard to fit him in somewhere that reflects his talent. I think you guys have laid out, what the situation presented. I mean, like I'd, played out. How do you want to answer that? I just want to say one, one other one or add one other thing. And I, I mentioned it kind of offhandedly in, in uh, what was it Monday's newsletter. Um, the Knicks already told us what they think of Mitchell Robinson. Like they didn't make him a restricted free agent. Like there is, there is literally nothing that they could do now to prevent him from going to another team. They had the opportunity to prevent him from going to another team. They had that ability. And they said this, that ability to do that is not more important to us than like bringing back Nerland's Noel and like bringing back Alec Burks, which just think about that for a second. As you, you people out there listening, like that kind of spe- I, I get that there's all kinds of caveats and like, yes, they could still. Neg- and, and who knows? Maybe they reach an extension with them tomorrow. And and we, we will later find out like, oh, they always thought they had this in the bag, in which case what I'm saying kind of lessens. But like, I don't know. I think they already kind of told us what how important Mitch was to their plans or, or lack thereof. You're 100 percent right. And I think the other thing as well as at least in my mind, it was. Again, if they wanted to go down that path of trying to maximize cap space next year for whatever reason, it makes sense to have Mitch's cap hold because it's small, it's less than $2 million, all of that. But the Knicks didn't do that. They then went the opposite route, which is, no, we don't really yes. care about our cap space next year yes. because we're spending now. 
So yeah. what the Knicks could have done is they could have made Mitch a restricted free agent, signed all of these players, and then like what they're going to do with Derrick Rose, gone above the cap to re-sign Mitch. It's not like the Knicks are hard cap this year. So if they wanted to spend, you know, or if they had to spend $20 million on Mitchell Robinson, they wouldn't. I mean, you know, again, just hypothetically, yeah. they could have. Nothing would have stopped them. So that's what I'm trying to figure out as well, where it's like, if you're New York, you know that you have this perfect opportunity where you can keep Mitch for probably another four years. I mean, maybe three, depending on how his contract structure structured. And instead you're basically saying like, well, we are prepared to let him walk. And we're, we're like, it seems like we're okay with that because we've got neurons as well behind him. Um, so it, it's fascinating how they're working this out because again, like, yeah, I mean, imagine if this were someone, it would never would be the case, but imagine if this were someone like RJ, right? Yeah. Where it's like you have him and you're really going to let that level of player, what you think that level of player is going to be, be signed by any of the 29 other teams and you have no say over whether you can match that or not. That's yeah. crazy to me. So I just don't think that there's a long-term future here. And I think what you said is absolutely right, John. And the other question was from Jesse Barbalato. Uh, just want to continue the Sims conversation. I've never seen Mitch with a floater or hook like we yep. saw in Summer League from Sims. You think that's something that they're working towards with Mitch's development, which I think we've also, I don't think they are working towards Mitch's well, development. At this point. I'm going to, um, and I apologies, by the way, because I, I miss, I, I wrote the wrong first name uh, when I referenced this person's article. Um, Justin Frank uh, wrote an article a few weeks ago or a week or maybe two weeks ago. I don't know. I lose, lose track of time um, in which uh, it seemed like it was a pretty well, well reported uh, story in which it basically goes into uh, Mitchell Robinson's situation with his personal trainer, uh, Marcel Scott, um, who um, I, w- I would just, I would encourage everybody to go read the article. Um, but in short, it's basically like, this guy does not necessarily have Mitch's best interests at heart. Um, he has been more in it for trying to get Mitch to a certain agent that he, that it, Mitch is allegedly now with and that uh, Mars, Mr. Scott may allegedly be uh, benefiting from. Um, and there's also some stuff in the article talking about how Scott has like lost a lot of his clientele and that he has, you know, so it, I mean, if you're, if, I'm not an Instagram person, but my understanding is like based on the you could tell where a person is based on like the photos that they they post like Obi Toppin and Emmanuel quickly have been up here in New York for pretty much since the season ended. Like they work out with the Knicks. They work out in the Knicks gym. They do all that shit. Mitch goes down and like we see this all these videos from like that. He goes and fucks around in the gym. Not I shouldn't say fucks around in the gym. Like we see what he does. He's 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 you know, is that making Mitch a better basketball player? I don't know. I haven't seen one iota of, of offensive improvement from him over the last three years, other than maybe some better s- screen setting. If that, and I don't even know if that's true, like defensively he's improved. And I think, uh, you know, shout out to Kenny Payne for maybe starting to work with him on some, on some stuff. And he was really starting to reach a new level, but like, I don't know, man, in terms of like, when you, when, when I hear the question, like what it, the Knicks and, and development and Mitchell Robinson, I just don't know that they have the opportunity because I don't know that he's giving them that opportunity. 